hey guys and welcome back to my channel today i'm doing things a little bit different i've got a book review but it's not a book review of a recent book um i've done this once before on my channel where i picked a book that came out a couple years prior and i reviewed it because i didn't think it was very well known or talked about a lot and i thought that it really really deserved to have a conversation about it and have more people know about the book so that is kind of the angle that i am taking today so today I'm going to be talking about Ronald Malfi's December Park. Um, this book came out, I believe, in 2014. Um, and it was one of the hardest books I've ever had to trace, uh, to track down. I think the only other book I've ever put this much effort into was Stephen King's Richard Bachman's Rage. Um, as you can see, I've got an advanced reader's copy. I first got this book and when it came in the mail, it was in German. Um, and then I thought I was getting a hardbound um, like copy from Amazon and they sent me an advanced reader's copy instead. So I'm fairly certain it's pretty much the same as the original text, fingers crossed that it is, but this is the copy that I was able to get. I do know that it is being released, I believe, by Open Road Media, I think that's the publishing company. Um, in paperback very very soon i'm gonna link that down um, in the description box in case you are interested in this i believe it's retailing for 29.99 um, if you want a physical copy if you use an e-reader it's very readily available so yes so this is ronald malfi's december part i'm going to quickly read the back of the book um it says in the fall of 1993 the the quiet suburb of harding farms is shocked when children begin to vanish and one is found dead near december park a great sweeping expanse that is sunken below the streets and surrounded on three sides by vast woodlands, a place children believe is haunted. Newspaper call the abductor the Piper because he has come to lead children away, while kids whisper darker names for him in the school halls. Angelo Mazzoni and his friends discover a link to the dead girl and take up the search for the killer, vowing to stop the Piper's reign of terror. Their teenage pledge becomes a journey of self-discovery and an odyssey into the darkness of their own hometown, hell on earth. Um, so yeah, that is the general uh, description of December Park. Um, December Park to me, I found originally from a guy on Instagram called Monty Reads. I highly, highly, highly recommend you check out his page. I've talked about him before and I will link it down below. He read this book and raved about it, so I went out of my way to track it down. Um, and I will say this is one of the best coming of age stories I have ever read. It might be one of the best, um stories I've ever read. I devoured this book. I loved this book. Um, if you don't know, my favorite novel of all time is It by Stephen King. This is very akin to that style of um, childhood adventures, except I will say the kids in December Park are about uh, 16, 15 or 16 years old versus It, where they're about 12. Um, so definitely a different, a uh, slight age difference, and it is set in the 90s. I could gush about this book all day. It's a pretty, it's, it's not the speediest read in the world, but it's not a doorstopper like it. It's about 550 pages, depending on the edition you have. I think mine was about 570. Um, and it's the story of Angelo, Scott, Peter, Michael, and the new kid, Adrian, as they go on a journey to try and find the serial killer that is attacking their small town in Maryland. Um, there's many, many qualities about this book that I liked. The first being, first and foremost, the children of the story. Uh, the story is narrated through the eyes of Angelo and his summer, or I guess his whole year trying to discover who the serial killer is and the adventure it takes him and his friends on. One of the biggest things about this book that I think really, really works is the characterization of the children, very akin to it, where when you read it, you really know who Eddie and Richie and Bill are. They have these very distinct personalities. You can see them in their head. What they do in certain, certain situations makes sense because of their characters. I felt that this was very, very poignant in um, December Park. I felt that Angelo's character was very well defined, especially in comparison to characters like Michael or Adrian who are vastly different from one another. I really felt like I knew all five of these kids um, they were very well fleshed out, very well developed, and their characteristics and their characters drove the plot. Um, because at the end of the day, the plot isn't necessarily the important part, right? When you read something like It, the story is about kids fighting an evil clown. Because in this one, the book isn't really about them 
confronting the serial killer. It is about their own adventures around the cops and just being these kids in a small town, bored during the summer, you know, skipping class and summer school and just trying to be kids going on an adventure that ends up being very dangerous and very real and very adult. Um, but it has very little to do with that, you know? It's very much um, an introspective on what it's like being a kid, especially being a kid, a teenage boy in the 90s. And I think it was done very, very well where the plot, even though it's a very compelling plot and I really enjoyed it, um, takes a back seat. Um, another thing that I found interesting is usually when I read books by Ronald Melfi, uh, what always strikes me the most is the atmosphere, how the atmosphere feels like a character, um, most definitely in his novel Bone White. Um, and this book, Harding Farms, didn't actually feel like a character for me. It just, and neither did December Park, and I, or any of the real locations, uh, the the shallows and the dead woods, and even um, all of like the decrepit buildings the boys go and uh, discover and explore. While they're very very important to the plot and the way Ronald Malfi writes them, they're still very eerie and creepy and like you can really see them. They didn't feel like characters in the way that settings do in his other novels, which actually worked very very well for this book I think because I think he really wanted to drive home that the stars of this story, not the serial killer, not the town, just these kids. Um, and I really really appreciated that. That being said, I believe Ronald Melvey is from Maryland. I am from Maryland. Reading about Maryland in a horror novel was amazing. It felt very real to me. I really understood the town and the setting and the types of people there because those are the types of people and places that I grew up with. Um, I imagine this is how people from Maine feel reading Stephen King books. Um, so that was really, really cool for me and I really enjoyed that. Um, another thing that I really enjoyed about this novel was that there are no supernatural elements. Um, if you've read other coming-of-age stories. Brian Keene's Ghoul is a very similar premise but very different because in Brian Keene's work, as with Stephen King's It, the monster is supernatural. Whereas in December Park, it's very real. This is something that could actually happen. You read this book and it's 100% believable. Um, and again, because of the lack of supernatural, it forces the reader to again start to pay attention to the kids themselves, their um, they're being forced to grow up in these situations that they're put in, how they interact with one another, and of course like what they're trying to do, which is of course catch a serial killer. Again, there are moments that like I think if I was in that situation, I'd probably call the the cops or tell an adult, you know, and this I feel like this happens a lot through December Park where I'm like, common sense tells me not to keep that to myself. Um, and these kids do ignore that. So there is a slight um, suspension of disbelief needed, but nowhere near as much needed as like imagining that there is a ghoul in your, your friend's graveyard next door. <laughs> and I really did appreciate that. I really liked how I was able to like overlook a few of the flaws, a few of the poor character choices, and kind of just rack it up to being like, these are teenage kids. Teenage kids don't make smart decisions sometimes. They don't always have common sense. They don't fully understand the world yet, but they think that they do. And I thought that that was a very um, present um, theme throughout this novel. Um, so the ending. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil this because I found the ending um, really good. I really liked it. Um, I did read a couple reviews, um, including Monty Reed's, where he said that the landing, or sorry, the ending didn't really stick the landing for him. And reading the book, when I first read like the big twist, the big like reveal or whatnot, I was like, hmm, I don't know about that. And then I kind of sat and thought about it and really pulled it apart and dissected it. And I was like, two things happen with this ending. One, if you really think about it, it is actually hinted out throughout the whole book. It's right there, but because we are put in um, the headspace of a kid, we wouldn't see it. And I thought that was very, very effective. Um, the innocence of a child becomes the innocence of the reader. And I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and then the other thing, just to go off of that, is the twist, even though I can see why people didn't like it, it's it's more of a metaphor for the loss of innocence than it is for um, being a good serial killer true crime story. Like this, this book is not a true crime story. It's not a detective thriller. It's not a whodunit. Yes, there are aspects about it, but 
um, a metaphor for growing up, for your loss of innocence, your loss of childhood. Um, which is why like, I feel like coming of age stories always have depressing endings, right? Like it's endings kind of a downer, Ghoul's ending's a super downer. This ending's a bit of a downer, not as much as um, like Ghoul in those, but it did leave me a little like empty inside and it's supposed to, you know, like you can't necessarily have like a happy go lucky ending with a coming of age story because that defeats the purpose of the metaphor. At the end of the day, this is a story about kids, but it's also a reflection for Ronald Malfi and any of the readers to understand this loss of innocence and this growing up. And I thought that when you look at it that way, the ending makes way more sense than if you just read it as like a, uh, a detective crime thriller kind of thing. And then of course, what I really liked with this is Ronald Malfi, there's, so there's like a big twist ending. And then there's like two other kind of like minor twists. One that I really saw coming from like a mile away, but that's that's fine. Um, I didn't I didn't mind that I saw it coming um, because I thought it added to the effectiveness as well as well as the overall um, explanation of character development for certain characters. And then there's like a, another like minor twist that I was like, ooh, like that's very subtle and like maybe not new. Like it wouldn't change the book at all. Um, if you got rid of it, but I really liked it because it added this element. Um, it, I don't even know how to say it without like ru ruining it. It just adds an element that adds layers and layers onto the depths of these characters and what they've gone through and how they got to where they are today. Um, and I just, I really, really loved the conclusion of this book. I loved going on the journey with these kids. I thought they were very fun. And I think everybody should really take a chance and look at December Park. If you like coming of age stories, you know, if you're someone who loves Summer of Night or Boy's Life or It or Ghoul or any of those, um, what's the other one I just picked up? Autumn Bleeds into Winter, I see always recommended with December Park. This is a book we should really be talking about more. And the fact that it's got to a point where it's kind of out of print, but it's become almost like a cult favorite in like the underground of horror lit, um, says a lot about why we should really and try and read this book and I really do hope that it coming briefly back into print right now um, allows like a spark to unfold and for more people to get their hands on it and give this book the the notoriety it deserves because I do think this is by far the best thing I've read by Ronald Malfi. It's one of the best books I have read um, in years, like hands down in years. This is a five star read for me. I'm sure you could figure that one out. Um, and it is just, it's it's a masterpiece. I felt very similar to the like reading this as I did to reading it. Um, I think something that it does that's a little more effective though, and I've said this before, is the monster is completely unseen in this story. So it is more of a, a spotlight on the characters themselves. Um, it's not a scary book. There's definitely a few scenes that are very eerie and there's very adult topics in this book. Um, and it'll leave you very like, on the edge of your seat and kind of uncomfortable at times. Um, but it's definitely more of a thriller than a horror story, but it is definitely one 100% worth reading. And it'll get you like right in the feels. Like I got so emotional reading the end of this book because it made me think of like my best friends in high school and when we had to go away to college and, you know, leave everything that we knew behind. Um, you know, and it, it just puts that in perspective of like, yeah, you grow up and you can't take your childhood with you. And I think this book nails that, nails that. And it, it puts in some elements that you didn't really see, um, or at least I haven't really seen in other coming of age stories. Grant, I haven't read Summer of Night yet. It is on my CBR list. I will be reading it very, very soon. Um, so it might be in that, but I just really liked the way the characters were handled in this. I liked seeing um, characters who were a little bit older than like preteens or like junior teens, whatever you would want to call them. I liked that they were at that like older age. Granted, sometimes the language and like the slang that Ronald Malfi threw in there, I was like, I don't know if like 15, 16 year olds say that, but like, whatever. Maybe they did back in like 1993, who knows. Um, but yes, I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. Um, but it it is thrilling, it is fun. It will really pull at your heartstrings. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal book. And I think anybody who's a fan of Ronald Malfi, anybody who's a fan of it, definitely check this guy out. Anyway, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I post every Monday and Thursday. If you enjoy these videos, hit that like and subscribe button down below. If there's any coming of age novels that like 
I'm completely overlooking, please let me know. I This is my favorite genre of horror and my favorite genre of book. So yes, definitely let me know about those in the comments. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.